Hi everybody, it's Dr. Magnifico uh, from jarrettsylvanandpavley.com. This is Toby. You can actually put him down because he's all excited to. So he came in to see me a couple days ago. Um, he had just been rescued um, from a long story. Um, the, the person who rescued him went to go look at rescuing another animal and ended up leaving with him. Um, when she picked him up, she realized he was covered in fleas. Now, I say all the time on my videos, like, you know, a couple of things are going to kill a cat. Certainly, um, being a small animal in, in a place where there are predators is dangerous. And then it's, they're too skinny from, because they have worms, intestinal worms, and they become anemic because they have fleas. And this little guy had terrible fleas. So, so when she brought him in initially and realized he had so many fleas, she got an over-the-counter medication. I'm, I'm pretty biased in that I don't like Sarts, hearts and sergeant, um, really no matter what they say. I just don't believe that they're very safe. And when you've got an already kind of weak, compromised kitten, um, you know, it can be really hard on them. So, so that I have a video on how to address fleas and kittens. Usually what I say is just um, a warm soapy water bath and a flea comb and just comb them off. It's tedious and it takes time, but it's far safer than buying a product and having that product be dangerous. So when he came in to see me on Thursday, he had sort of all over full body tremors. So I was worried that the product that she had used had contained a permethrin and that the tremors had caused, the product had caused tremors. So we didn't do anything for him then except to bathe him. So I wanted to bathe the product off of him because it was a topical product. So if you put a product on and your kitten or cat starts tremoring, it's really important to bathe that product off. So he, we put him on the bathtub, um, we used a dish detergent, and then we bathed him. And the, the typical, the typical um, advice is bathe them three times so they get three separate baths, and then you gotta make sure they really stay warm because these guys are now wet, and then they get chilly because they're under-muscled and they've had fleas that cause anemia. So we just went home to stay warm and kind of detox, and then he came back today and got his vaccines and his dewormer, more sunny out of fecal, and he got his microchip, and he got Felix FIV tested and came back negative, so that's super important. Um, and then we started talking about the rest of the stuff at home. So how do you introduce a new cat? For me, it's, when I sent him home on Thursday, it was putting him in a big carrier or a big dog crate and letting him acclimate to the rest of the house by being in a big carrier. So he had a bed, he had his food, he had a place where he could kind of hang out and sort of just get used to the smells and the sounds of his new house, but not be in any place where he could hide um, or, or potentially be, be in danger. So he's been there since Thursday, and his mom said, oh, I feel so bad for him because he's by himself and um, she was worried that he was getting lonely. And, you know, to my, to my point, I said, you know, I'd rather have him acclimate safely than you let him out in the house and the other adult cat or resident cat starts attacking him and then he gets really afraid. So he's in a new place with, that belongs to somebody else and then he's feeling, you know, defensive and, um, and hiding. So he has really gotten to bond with her. So he's a very sweet, affectionate kitten. And now we will, um, now that he's, he's had about his one week quarantine, we'll let him start to sniff the other cat kind of under the door to see if there's hissing. There's usually hissing. It's very common to get hissing. Um, and, then, and then when that starts to subside, which will probably take a couple days, he will go in that big crate that he was, has been in into the living area. So he's got a bed and a crate and a place where, where no one can get to him and he doesn't have to try to run and find a hiding spot. And then give that as many days or weeks as he needs before they start kind of interacting with each other safely between the cage door. But that's usually what I say. It means you have to be patient and take some time initially, but I'd rather have you take the time initially than have a cat who's constantly just find, trying to find a place to hide and retreat to because the other cat in the house is being a bully. So just be patient, don't feel bad for them because you're trying to do it safely, safe for everybody, and, um, and don't do what my friend did, which is, set free a semi-feral cat in her house, and now a year later, she still has a semi-feral cat in her house. Um, give them some time, let them acclimate, let everybody get used to each other, and then just do it really gradually so that long, you know, down the road, which is hopefully just a couple weeks down the road, they're all getting along nicely. If you have any questions about new kittens, about fleas, about over-the-counter products, or about how to acclimate a new cat in the house, you can find me at jaredsfullvet or probably.com. Take care, Toby, you're a very lucky kitten. A very lucky kitten.